When it comes to studying for exams, the Transport Canada Publication 2293, Examination Certification of Seafarers, gives the breakdown for all the examinations and required content for them in the form of a syllabus. It's quite a long document, readily available online, and the index inside it is very useful for finding what is required for each certificate. In my case, I'm working towards the Watchman Mate Certificate of Competency, so I go to the table of contents on the left-hand side. Chapter 15 lists all the exams that are required for this. Going through the list, the one of the topic today is SCS4, Ship Construction and Stability Level 4. You see here it says refer to Chapter 5, so I'll go to Chapter 5 in the index. Master Mariner. Scroll down inside that to SCS4, and you can see right here, occasionally the links do not work that well as you can see. As you can see here now, SCS4, what's required for this exam is broken down through the following pages for the competencies required, and of note, for those internationally, all of these are aligned with the IMO STCW code for what's required for knowledge, so this video will still be useful for you for learning the material that's required. When it comes to the exam, you can see it's broken down quite nicely. The examination is because of multiple choice, simple drawings, descriptive questions, and practical calculations based on stability data books. For resources provided, when you get inside the room, they're going to give you the International Convention of Load Lines, the Load Line Map, a copy of SOLAS, and two stability books for Canadian vessels. You have three hours for the exam. This exam and the required content is quite a massive list of topics. So I break it down into a series of multiple videos in which it looks over the requirements and a brief description of the information you require to know for this. So starting off with the first one for us. On the left hand side is the subject with a competency requirement. It says that working knowledge and application of stability, trim and stress tables, diagrams, and stress calculated equipment. How you're required to know this and what details are required. First of all, talking about displacement. So we need to know what the definition of displacement is. So the first topic here is talking about displacement. So what that corresponds to for a ship is the weight to volume of water that ship displaces. So the picture in the top right here shows a large vessel. You can see the water lines located right here. This portion of the vessel is submerged underwater. That's the underwater volume of the vessel. So, depending on what type of water it's in, be it fresh water, salt water, or brackish water, the weight corresponding to that volume of water is the displacement of the ship. You'll find in many textbooks and problem examples, the symbol right here, upside down triangle, NABLA, is the symbol they use to correlate to displacement. There's two portions to displacement for any ship. There's the lightweight and the dead weight. So the lightweight is the ship itself when it's empty with its boilers top up to working level. So basically, as the ship was built, put into service, its engines are fitted, its boilers are topped up, no people on board it, no fuel, how much does it weigh? The second portion is what we call it a dead weight. That's the weight the ship carries, so fuel, cargo, ballast, etc. These two portions combined together, it was a displacement for the vessel. You'll find that over time, the light weight of a ship may change. There's various surveys required for that. But the big factor of concern for this exam is talking about the dead weight of the ship. So there'll be multiple problem examples coming up talking about how the displacement varies with the loading of cargo, how, to dra how the draft varies with displacement. That goes into the second portion here of this required topic. A displacement curve. So what that is, inside a vessel stability booklet, there will be a series of curves, our tables, talking about how the mean draft varies with change of displacement. So you can see it's a curve for this vessel here. Why, the reason behind that is, if you think in your head about, if it was just a box-shaped vessel, it would be a linear curve for displacement versus draft. However, in the case of a ship-shaped vessel, the hole, the hole itself changes as you go at various depths, so that causes a corresponding change to the rate of increase for draft or displacement. That's a topic for a later video talking about tons per centimeter immersion, but it's good to have in your mind for now. The kind of question you could be asked using a table like this with displacement on the x-axis and draft on the y-axis is, what is a draft of displacement of 5,000 tons? So to do this, we look inside our table. The bottom axis talks about displacement, so we've got a 5,000 tons on there. 
make yourself a line. These lines are exaggerated in thickness just to allow for illustrative purposes in the video. In reality, you're going to nice, nice thin line using your ruler. Intersect that line across to the y axis and see what corresponds to a draft. In this case, this marker is 4.5 meters going up by 0.1 meters, so it lines up with 4.9 meters. The next type of question one could get asked is something like this. A ship of displacement 4,100 tons arrives at port and unloads 500 tons of cargo. What is a change in mean draft? So once again, using our draft displacement curves, have a look at the 4,100 tons going in the vertical axis. That corresponds to a draft of approximately 4.25 meters. We now look at our next displacement, which is going to be 3,600 tons, corresponds to 3.8 meters. Apologies for skipping ahead there. The reason why I looked at 3,600 tons is because the change in displacement of 500 tons brings us down to 3,600 tons. Now finally, look at the difference in these two values gives a change in mean draft of decimal 4.5 meters. So we know that since we're unloading cargo, this is going to be a reduction in draft by 0.45 meters. The final kind of question we're going to talk about today is the amount of cargo required to be loaded or discharged to affect a required change in draft. Example of this being a ship has a draft of 5.0 meters required to reduce her draft to 4.5 meters. So once again, using our displacement curves, figure out how much cargo must be discharged. So at our 5 meter draft, what does our displacement correspond to? 5,200 tons. At the 4.5 meter draft, displacement corresponds to 4,500 tons. Well, the difference of these gives us a difference of 700 tons. What this means to us is that to affect this half meter change in our draft, we require a to discharge 700 tons of cargo. To recap the material we covered in this video, for the first section of the requirements for SCS4, we covered definitions of displacement and covered how to use displacement slash draft curves. The next video coming up is going to feature the remainder of the material required in this section.